I'm about to reveal how I minted 150 Polygon NFTs straight into my OpenSea wallet in about 30 seconds using a brand new tool that I recently discovered. So if you're looking to upload your NFT collection in mass, then stick around because I'm going to be walking through the exact process that I'm using. And I'm also going to highlight some quirks that I'm seeing with OpenSea that virtually no one's talking about and frankly has me somewhat worried. But first, let me explain why I felt this video was necessary necessary to make in the first place. So the idea of bulk uploading NFTs has kind of been a thorn in everyone's side for a little while now. See, in the past with OpenSea, people were using screen recorders or automated testing solutions like Selenium in order to navigate the user interface and in effect, bulk upload their NFTs. But OpenSea has since cracked down on this kind of activity by introducing capture requirements for each NFT that gets uploaded. And this in effect is serving as a rate limiter for minting NFTs on OpenSea. And manually uploading NFTs is about as stimulating as watching paint dry, but fear not because I may have just cracked the code. And just as a quick note, this entire tutorial can be completed on your mobile phone without having to download any applications. In fact, you can even mint NFTs directly from your phone's camera. So a couple things about the Nifty Mints platform. I actually reached out to the founder in order to kind of get smarter about this tool and we exchanged some emails and there were a couple key pieces of information that he thought might be useful for you to know. First, the company is part of something called Stripe Climate, which means they've committed to donating 2% of their profit to carbon removal efforts. And on the technical side, unlike OpenSea, Nifty Mints does not use the concept called lazy loading. So when you mint your NFTs, they actually go directly onto the Polygon chain. Additionally, the metadata and the assets themselves go into a decentralized file storage called IPFS. Again, OpenSea does not do that unless you're electing to freeze your metadata. And for a deep dive into what all that actually means, check out my video covering the topic of freezing metadata. Additionally, Nifty Mints creates a unique contract for each collection and assigns you as the owner of that contract. And they do this at no cost to you. Whereas on OpenSea, everyone uses the same minting contract and that contract is owned by an OpenSea address. Anyways, those are just some of the benefits of using Nifty Mints. It's always hard to evaluate these companies because they're so nascent, but everything I'm seeing and hearing from the founder makes it sound like a fairly reputable company. And just as a quick story, in the video I created about how to create, sell, and transfer NFTs on OpenSea, I actually minted an NFT of my dog, Mr. Whittles, and in the ensuing weeks, I received multiple offers to buy it. Currently, there is an offer on the table to buy it for $27 US but I'm probably gonna hold on to it and wait for that whale to come along before selling it. <coughs> and if you like this video, you're gonna love my video about how to create, sell, and transfer NFTs on OpenSea, and you can check out that right here. And just as a fun giveaway, if you wanna put your Ethereum wallet address in the comments, then I will gift you an NFT that I created from this tutorial. And real quick, there is no gas limit on showing your gratitude. So go ahead and hit that like button so that we can help get out the word of crypto and Web3. Okay, so before creating my NFT collection, I just wanna polish up some of the images. So I'm gonna do that using a batch photo editor called Be Funky. And we're gonna just go to create, and then we're just gonna go over to batch. And what I'll do is add images. I have a whole folder here. So I'm gonna add these in, and then we're gonna make some bulk edits. and then. We we will mintify them. A few minutes later. Okay, so they're all uploaded. Let's throw some effects on them. There's this chromatic, which I think looks pretty cool. Let's see here. Yeah, let's do something like this. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and apply that. Okay, so we added chromatic. Let's also play around with vibrance. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and apply that. Okay, so I think our collection looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save these. We're gonna do PNG, it tends to be better quality. Okay, so I might need to unzip some of these folders. So the next step is we're gonna come over to a service called Nifty Mints and we're gonna go ahead and create a new collection and we're gonna call this My Life 
in NFTs. Oh, okay. And then I'm gonna go to upload files. Okay, so these are all our files. And one thing we had to do here was enter our Ethereum wallet address. So the way you wanna do that is when you're over on OpenSea, you have your wallet address right here or in MetaMask. Okay, so our wallet address is also available in the MetaMask Chrome extension. So we just want to take that over to Nifty Mints and make sure that we have that plugged in correctly. Because what it's going to do is we're going to mint all these NFTs and they're going to be sent to our wallet address. So let's just review these real quick. So it looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and do publish. So this is 145 NFTs. So let's go ahead and publish. And we're going to select confirm. And we can see the progress that it's making. A little longer. Okay, so it actually looks like everything was minted. Obviously, the bigger the files, the longer it'll take. But um, let's take a look at these. So if we click on the image, we can select show on OpenSea. So I'm going to refresh my OpenSea profile and immediately you can see here, I now have 206 NFTs. Okay, so it takes several minutes for the images to render because I think the block needs to be confirmed. So just keep that in mind. You'll have these placeholder images for potentially several minutes. So now we can come to our OpenSea profile and they're gonna be hidden by default. But what we can do is go ahead and unhide them. And we can actually just select all of them. If you go to edit, you might want to remove Nifty Mints as a collaborator because they can modify the payout address. And I actually spoke to the founder and he said that this happens automatically. They didn't intend for that. Okay, so I do want to draw a distinction that I think will be useful. So when you use this approach to create NFTs, the approach outlined in this video, you're actually creating entries on the Polygon blockchain. You're truly creating NFTs. You're also freezing the metadata and the asset is stored on IPFS. But the most important thing is your transaction is getting onto the Polygon blockchain. When you create an NFT from OpenSea, from the user interface on OpenSea, it's using a process called lazy minting and it's actually not making an entry onto the blockchain. It does that to minimize fees. It doesn't charge you until a transaction arises. So if I go ahead and create an NFT, I select Polygon. Okay, notice how it doesn't say you created an NFT. It just spits back this file name. And the reason is because it didn't create an NFT or it didn't put anything on the blockchain. There's no reference to Polyscan because it's not on the chain. This is just uploaded to OpenSea's marketplace. It'll be available for people to look at and it will be available for people to try to make a purchase, but it's not on the blockchain yet. And what's nice about that is you can sell it and you can list it for free without any gas fees. So let's just throw a price on this. So we list it on OpenSea. And again, we're not truly listing it for other exchanges because it's not making its presence known on the blockchain. This is just a open sea thing. Okay, so when we do this, the reason we were able to list it or sell it for free is because again, nothing's on the blockchain. All it's doing is now listing it on OpenSea for a particular price and nothing has hit the blockchain. That's why you're able to quote unquote sell it for free. But when we're using Nifty Mints, it truly is on the blockchain. So if we wanna sell one of our assets on Nifty Mints, go to this collection here, these are all actually on the blockchain. So say we wanna sell one of these, it's going to ask us to pay gas fees. And the reason is because we're actually doing something on the chain. And that means anyone with access to the chain can purchase it, not just through OpenSea. So check this out. We're going through the exact same steps, but now it's gonna ask us to pay gas fees. See, it's asking us to pay this gas fee. And the gas fee, if we wanna convert it to USD, just out of interest, it would be about 43 cents to list a single NFT. So not nothing, but I just wanted to draw that distinction for you. That's why you can sometimes do some free transactions and other times it will require gas fees. All depends if it's on the chain or not. Any entry to the chain costs money because validators have to uh, commit it, commit that entry. 
so let's review our collection here so these are the items that i uploaded from nifty mint and i want to show you how these manifest on the actual blockchain so we can see the entry here and if we want to go over to polyscan so we can see the contract id and we can see the token id see the token id of this is 58 the reason it's such a low number is because we created our own contract so let's just go over to the contract and for this contract contract we can see all the transactions it's only going to be the transactions that i committed because this is a unique contract to me okay so let's go over to the contract so as we can see here the contract is transparent and so we could audit this code I don't know enough about Solidity to really be intelligent about appraising this code, but this checkbox here means that the hash of the contract matches the code that's being shown here so that we know this is the actual code. Otherwise, we'd not get that green checkbox there. But anyways, let's pull an assets metadata so I can show you what that looks like. So we're going to run a query against the contract by providing the token ID and it's going to give us back the IPFS URL. So we need an IPFS gateway in order to pull this up. IPFS gateway, Cloudflare has a good one. It's cloudflare-ipfs.com and then we can plug in the URL that it just gave us. So now we just queried IPFS for the metadata and we can see the name of our file and then we can also see that this is the URL itself. So we should also be able to pull up the image itself. Okay, and so now we're pulling our image from IPFS. So it's truly on the decentralized. So we can see what's getting on the chain. What's getting on the chain is the pointer to the metadata. And as part of the metadata, we have the URL for the image, which is also hosted on IPFS. So essentially the metadata and the image are hosted on IPFS and the polygon chain is pointing to those IPFS addresses. And if we look at the contract, the owner of the contract is going to be our Ethereum wallet address, which is nice. So we're looking at this contract here and the contract is not used by anyone except us. So when we upload the NFTs, Nifty Mint is creating the contract solely for our use. In contrast, when we create an NFT using OpenSea and transact, so it's actually created, not just lazy minted, it's using a generic OpenSea contract that everyone's using. So for example, if I pull up this NFT, which I created on the OpenSea platform, if I look up the contract address, so this is one of the cool things about Nifty Mints. When we create our collection, it creates the contract and we're the owner, and then it uses that contract to create the NFTs. Whereas on OpenSea, if I look at one of the NFTs that I created from OpenSea, and then I look up the contract, you can see this contract is being used by everyone who's trying to generate NFTs on OpenSea. And OpenSea is the owner of that contract. So you can see how Nifty Mints is a little bit better there.